Welcome back to the Ibitra Sisu channel. In today's class, we are going to learn how to make this beautiful kimono beaded bubble dress. Okay, it has this beautiful bit in center front. We are going to be learning how to make all of this in this tutorial. It's a very simple tutorial and it's beginner friendly. This is something you like to learn. Kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so to make this booboo dress, I'm going to be working with this Ankara fabric. And as we all know, these African prints are always 45 inches in length. Okay, so I'm going to be using the length side as the as the width of my fabric. And then the measurements you are going to need for this is your center back measurement all the way to, to where you want your sleeves to stop which is around the elbow area so for me from my center back to my elbow is around 20 inches so i'm just going to add around two inches for aiming the sleeve okay so that's what i'm adding to this measurement so you need 20 inches so like i said this entire fence is 45 inches so this is the length 45 inches and you have your yard you can have as many as you want so this is how i'm going to be folding my fabric i'm going to fold the fabric by the yardage first and the yardage is going to be the length that's the total length that's from your shoulder all the way to your full length which in this case is 60 inches for me so now on this yardage side you need to measure 60 inches and then when you measure 60 inches you fold it like that so that you have 60 here and 60 here that's going to be your length for the front and length for the back so after folding on the yardage 60 inches or whatever length you're working with the next thing i'm going to do now is to now fold again into four in such a way that my width that's this measurement is going to fall on the on the 45 inches side so that it can contain my remember mine is actually 20 inches so 20 inches for one side if you add it to the 20 inches for the other side that's going to be 40 inches and my 45 inches is still going to take it so i'll have if you divide the 45 inches you have about 22.5 here 22.5 here so by the time you fold it it's still going to take what you need i hope you understand that so i'm folding my fabric first into two because i'm not going to be having any shoulder joining i'm folding first into two and then again i'm going to fold into four this is what i have done here okay so now after making all of these foldings the next thing now is to start cutting my pattern it's a booboo dress so it's very very simple and easy to cut on this part i'm going to cut my so after folding on this folded point okay you're going to measure your neck width so the neck width i'm working with is three inches or three and a half inches i don't want this too wide remember you're still going to aim it inwards so now if you measure three and a half inches from your center front you have it like this and then for the depth depending on how deep you want it to be is a little bit deep but remember there is a bit there so even if it's too deep you can still be this around that side so cover it up if you don't want but for me the depth that i'm going to be working with is going to be around six and a half to seven inches so that's going to be my neck depth and i have it like this so i'm going to take my curb driller now and make my neckline curve and we have the same neck measurement for both the front and back and like i said we are not going to have any joining on the shoulder so if you are working with dresses like this especially dresses that does not have lining if you can avoid so many seams seam lines is better so this is the neckline that i have and the next thing i'm going to do now is to create the cow effect because this has a little cow effect on the side so now i'm going to create that cow effect so depending on where you want it to stop for me i want it to stop around two inches above my knee length so my knee measurement is 40 inches two inches above my knee measurement is going to give me around 38 inches so from this shoulder let me just explain with this pattern okay so now we have taken our neckline measurement so we are going to assume this is our neckline measurement the next thing is to measure from my shoulder all the way to my two inches above my knee so for me two inches above my knee is 38 inches so now on my fabric i'm going to measure the 38 inches okay which is here and then i'm going to make it into a straight line 
so on that 38 inches i'm going to take my hip measurement my hip measurement is 46 inches 46 inches there by four is going to give me 11 and a half inches so i have 11 and a half inches here and then for it to be a little bit free i'm going to add extra three to four inches to that okay so i'm adding three and a half inches and then i have it like this so now what i just did was to take my hip measurement on this knee length two inches above me i took my hip measurement and then i added extra three and a half inches to that so this measurement that i have here i'm going to take it on the hem as well to form a straight line so i've shifted to the hem on my dress and then now i measured everything i have here is about 15 inches so i'll come to the hem as well and then mark the 15 inches here so now after marking it to you take your ruler and then connect this to form a straight line okay so now the lower part is done so now we move again to the upper part so this is what i have done i'm just doing this on a smaller space so that we'll see exactly what i'm doing so now the next thing i'm going to do now is to create my sleeve opening that's where your hand is going to come from and then you're going to do that on this open space okay so now you can use your ham hole measurement as a guide for this my actual arm hole measurement is nine inches but as you can see this is actually bigger than your round arm hole measurement so you can add around three inches to this and make it 12 inches or depending on how big you want this to be actually so this is totally up to you but i think i'm going to be working with around 12 inches for mine so what i've done here on this open part is to measure from the shoulder and then i measured around 12 inches which is going to be where my arm comes out from okay so now on that part where you have your your sleeve opening i just increase this to 14 inches because I want it a little bit big so i have 14 inches here now so on that point remember the measurement i took from my center back to my elbow is 20 inches so i'm going to mark the 20 inches now from my center point so now from this center point i'm going to mark out my 20 inches and it's going to be around here so on my fabric again i'm going to mark out 20 inches from my center front and it's going to stop here okay can add up an inch to it so the 20 inches is going to stop here but for this sleeve opening so that i can turn it out easily i'm going to add extra two inches outwards like this okay you can just leave it at the same level and then you use something to turn it over i just want this to be easy for me okay so this extension that i have here is what i'm going to use to fold in my sleeve okay so this extension is what i'm going to use to fold in my sleeve so for the cow effect that we have so this is the shape that we have now this extension is what we are going to use to end the sleeve and this is the actual 20 inches so to get my cow sleeve now what i'm going to do now is that remember they already taken our hip measurement plus three and a half inches on the knee length here so to form the cow i'm just going to connect like this from my 20 inches that i marked from the center front and then i'm going to connect all the way to my to my knee measurement okay so now using my free hand i'm going to i'm going to connect from here now all the way to that main point just like this okay i hope you see that and the cow is created so now i'm going to go ahead and cut out this new shape that i have Okay, so I'm cutting this now and then I just have to cut like half an inch away from my chalk marking. Okay. Okay, so on the sleeve I'm just going to open it out for my Emmy. So this is the shape that I have for my booboo now and then on the neckline I'm going to go ahead and cut my neck measurement remember i said we are using the same neck measurement for both the front and back and this depth can still be covered with your bead if you feel it is too wide okay so when we get to that we'll understand it better so now if you look at the thumbnail very well you'll see that there's a plain fabric that is replacing the center front so now to get this plain fabric you need to know the depth that's where the plain fabric is going to stop so for me this point where i have my 
cow neck stops which is two inches above my knee length the 38 inches this is where i want the plain fabric to stop as well so what i'm going to do now is to just connect from this point okay so i'm going to be connecting from this point okay in a diagonal line all the way to my neck my neck depth my all the way to my neck width. so you just take your ruler from where your two inches above your knee you take your ruler and then place it on your neck depth like this and then connect diagonally okay so this is what i'm going to do right now so i'll just connect with my long ruler so i have connected this half you can see my my chalk line very well so this is going to just be like a cut and replace kind of thing so now we are going to go ahead and then cut out that marking that we have made and then we place this on a plain fabric and then replace it so when you're placing on the plain fabric remember we are sewing this back together so you remember to add your seam allowance to that okay so we have cut this out now and i have it like this so i'll just go ahead i'm working with a plain satin fabric so i'll cut two of these one for the front and one for the back and then i'm going to hide my seam allowance so to guide us in sewing this so to guide in sewing this back remember we are sewing this back on this point where the neck neck line stops here you can just notch that point okay so that's going to guide you when you are sewing it so that you can have something uniform on both sides so here now i can just lift it up now and then give it a small notch at that point okay okay so as you can see now i have gone ahead to place this on the plain fabric and then i held it with my paint so that it doesn't shift and i cut out what i have there so i just added half an inch seam allowance around it so that i can use that to sew it back so this is the shape that i have and i have two of these one for the front and the other for the back so what i'm going to do next now is to bring in my hatra bodies and then i'll take it with my sewing machine and i'm going to sew it okay so now i'm going to open this up now and then I'm going to replace the front back with what I cut out from it. So you arrange it well and then you just insert this plain black fabric and then you go ahead and then sew it back. So when you're sewing this, remember the place that we notched. So you match it like this and then you match the other side as well so that you have them on the same level. Okay, so I have gone ahead to sew it and you can see that the neckline aligned, it has to align and then you have to be very mindful of the V shape that you have here also. So you just make a notch here to make it easier for you and if you are a beginner, all you just need to do is to slash through completely. So you have two separate, you have two halves. So once it is two separate um, fabric, it will be easier for you to fix this insert that you have here so i have a tutorial on how you can insert a very deep v yoke neckline so if you watch that video it's going to guide you on how to get something very nice and easy so this is the front and this is the back although you can use anywhere as your front and back since we have the same thing on both sides so now that we have this the next thing i'm going to do now is to go ahead and hem the Sleeve, okay remember we have this extension and this is a selvage as with this nice selvage you fold it by half an inch first but because it's a selvage i'm just going to fold this by one inch inwards like this and then i'll go ahead and sew it down so after sewing it down i'm going to place it like this and then i'm going to sew the side seam so i'll do this for the two sides okay i'm going to place it like this and then i'll go ahead and sew it on the side seam so here when you get to around 15 or 18 inches you measure 18 inches from the hem upwards and then you leave like a slit there so that you can walk easily in this dress so you do that for the two sides and then on the neckline area i'm going to be turning this neckline with a bias so i'll go ahead and do all of that now okay so i have gone ahead to aim it with my bias you can see that it is neatly hemmed now 
and then also on the sleeve area i hemmed the sleeve inwards before sewing it on this side so here i left around 18 inches like i explained and then i folded it inwards before i hemmed the lower part okay so i did the same thing for the other side as well and this is what it looks like on the back as well so now what i'm going to do now is to go ahead and iron this you cut off all the thread and then i'm going to iron it before i start beading remember once you beat it you don't want to place horse iron on it so i'm going to go ahead now and iron this then bring you back for us to bead on it okay so now to bead it i'm working with this you can use whatever bead you want you can use plastic bead but i advise you use crystal beads because they are a bit glittering so i'm using this beautiful glass bead and it's crystal in nature but i love this shape it has this beautiful oval shape so there are several bits you can use and for my thread i'm not going to be using the regular thread because remember this is just strand and you don't want to go through all this stress or for it to just rip apart so you want to use something really strong so i'll be using this fishing line okay fishing lines are very very strong they don't cut easily so that's why i'm making use of this fishing line as against the regular thread and then you work with a needle that you know can take the beads the size of the beads that you're working with so i'm also working with this bead needle the size is i think number 11 okay so that's what i'm working with so all you just need to do now is to pass your fishing line through the needle just like you thread your normal and needle and after that you start to beat this so i have already done this one i didn't know my camera was was not recording so after passing your thread you make sure you knot it at the end like this and then you start to be so when we were drafting i explained that even if your neck depth is very deep because later i went ahead to reshape my neckline i want the front to be a little bit deeper so i left the back like this but if you look at my front let me just turn it i reshaped after sewing the inset you can see that i later reshaped the front a little bit i made it like one and a half inches deeper so i'm just going to use my bead to cover up so that's not going to be a problem so you can see now after beading it you start from your shoulder you can see that i started beading from my shoulder and then i made sure to insert enough beads to cover up up to the level that's the new neck depth now up to the neck depth that i want remember this is the neck depth that we have on our fabric now i want the bead so what this is going to do is that it's going to raise your neck depth yes but it's going to show a little bit of skin because it's a bead it's actually not a fabric so that is why i want that effect which is why i made it even lower so now to bead it all you just need to do is to pass your needle into this shoulder area here you can see i want it to be as close as possible then after passing it like this you make sure that you tie it as much as possible my needle is quite wide i can see that i've not cut this off i want to kind of use my my this thing to burn it so that just to secure it more so just whatever it is that you know that you can use to secure this please do so now i'm going to make sure to pass it around two or three times so that i can tie a knot there before i start placing my bead and like i said my thread is quite long so make sure you work with a thread that you can easily control so you can see how i'm just passing it inwards like this so that i can tie it let me just reduce this a bit so that it's not going to disturb us and the beauty of this fishing line is that you know the color is clear it's like white so it's not going to give you any different color from the color of the bead you are working with or the color of the fabric so now again i'm going in again and then i'm going to tie it one more time so once i secure it and i'm sure that it's not going to remove i will start placing my bead so this is what i was saying about long thread if you know you cannot control the thread please just use something smaller that you'll be able to control easily okay so again my i thought my camera was recording so after knotting your tie the next thing now is to start picking your beads okay 
so you pick as many as you need so for me i already made three okay so you need to be using your bead okay as you're picking it you'll be checking to know if it's enough so if you have a mannequin is easier to do this on the mannequin so that you know how it sits on the neck very well okay because you want to be sure so now i'm just going to go ahead now and pick the beads so i'm picking from here okay so now that i have filled up to the desired bit the next thing you're going to do now is to check if it aligns with the one you already make if it's not up to what you need you just need to add more okay so i think i'm just going to add one more bit to this then after adding the bit i'll go ahead and sew it okay to the next one remember i already have one too so i'll just i have about quarter of an inch in between them and then i'm going to pass the needle and then i'll tie it there so that is how you are going to keep passing your bit so you fill everything up so it's going to be a lot so i'm not going to be able to show us everything on camera but i'm just basically doing the same thing okay you keep doing the same thing so you fill up all of the spaces so the first ones are going to be very wide as you can see because it's on the neckline area but as you progress it's going to be easier because it will become narrower remember we are following this center pattern center pattern design that we have so you can see that as you are bidding it it's going to become narrower and then it is going to be easier to do till you get to the last point so now i'll go ahead and continue doing the bidding and then i'll show us what we have so i'm not sure i'll finish it in this video but i'll just do some more and then i'll show us what it looks like okay so i just want to show us the points that i have right now so i have filled up all the neckline now you just need to bid along the v shape that we created okay so along this line so you now start picking from one side to the other okay it's not going to extend into your entire so like i have sewn here now neatly you start picking your beads so as you move down the beads the number of beads that you will need will be reduced and it will make the job easier for you so now i'm just going to pick enough to fill from here to here and then i'm going to tack it on the other side okay so now that i have filled it up with the bead i'm just going to take my needle and thread now and then pick it at the point where it joins to the entire fabric i hope you can see that it's just simple sewing and after picking it i'm going to knot a tie there to secure it and then i'll go over and do the same thing all over again to fill up all the space that i have there so you have to do this carefully and you make sure that your your fishing line is not that good so like i said you can just work a small fishing line that you can control so after placing it like that i'm just going to pass it like two or three times so that i can secure it before i move to the next one so it is as simple as that and like i said once you start moving downwards it becomes easier because it will be faster you don't need so much with so i'm just going to pass it inward and then knot my tie just like that so i'll continue filling it up till i get to the end point so you can see that this is also attached to it okay so i just want to show us the level that i have now you can see that i'm almost through so you can feel it as close as you want this is close enough for me you can make it very close but for me i have about quarter of an inch in between all of them so now you can see that i'm almost through i'm almost at the end point so now i am just going to continue filling it up till i get to the end point so now by the time i finish it i'm going to show us again what this looks like but this is what i have done so far 
okay so now the dress is fully beaded as you can see and like i explained you can see that the neckline is very low in front but the bit that we have here is just going to cover up for the neckline so i'll just advise that you make your neck width as small as possible i use three and a half inches here so you can just use around three inches because it tends to just become really broad so you continue beading it just like i have done up to the last part you can see and when you are as you are going down the bead reduces so it makes your work easier so this that you have done to the front you are going to repeat the same thing for the back as well that's if you want or you can just have it just at the front and you can see the cow effect that we have here on this side so if you want to put a pocket on this side as well you can fix a pocket of your dress i have several tutorials on the channel on how you can fix a pocket to a dress so i hope you enjoyed making this beautiful booboo dress with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye